What's up, you guys? It's Levi here. Welcome to the Cybersecurity Education Channel. In my previous video, I talked about the top five cybersecurity risks in 2019. If you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and hit the card up above and go ahead and watch that video. In that video, I made a promise to you guys that I would come out with in-depth videos of each of the five subjects that I'm talking about in that video, and I'm keeping my promise to you guys because I keep promises, and today we're going to be talking about all, all you need to know about SIM jacking and SIM swapping. SIM jacking slash SIM swapping, they're basically the same thing. I'm going to call it SIM jacking throughout this video. Um, and the first key point that I want you guys to be aware of is that this can happen to anybody. Um, you don't have to be Warren Buffett to have this happen to you. Granted, I just saw in an article today that Warren Buffett still uses his old um, flip phone from you know those things that were around like 15 years ago, just dumb and don't do anything. Um, despite the fact that he owns like 5% of Apple, uh, which is quite a bit of Apple. And he is like one of the richest people in the world, so that's an interesting fact. He might even be able to be affected by this attack. Um, but basically, my goal out of this video is to, to first of all tell you guys what sim swapping is or sim jacking, why sim jacking is a bad thing. Um, I'll give some real world examples of sim jacking. And then finally, the most important part. I'm going to tell you what you guys can do to help protect yourself from SIM jacking and what to do if you get SIM jacked. So I hope you guys enjoy this content. Let's go ahead and get started. So what is SIM jacking? And I think in order to be able to talk about SIM jacking, we first have to talk about what a SIM card is. So you guys know by now that my artistic skills are super great. So here's a picture of a phone here. And basically what a SIM card is, is all the new phones have a SIM slot on their phone. We'll just say that this is a slot here. And it's a little card about this small. If you can see it on the camera there, it might be hard to see, but it's pretty small. It fits into that little slot on your phone here. And this SIM card that you put into your phone actually tells your carrier, so Verizon, AT&T, things like that, um, that this is actually your phone. The SIM card is assigned to you, and whatever phone that you put it in, that's how it knows that that phone is your phone. So that's what a SIM card does. Um, it provides the ability for your carrier to see that this phone is actually your phone. Um, it allows your carrier to push out the phone number to it, um, to push out text to it, um, to push out your data plan, things like that. And so you can actually take the SIM card out of your phone now that you have now, and you can put it in your new phone if you wanted to. And um, as long as your carrier wasn't blocking it, your new phone would then activate with your carrier and you could use your new phone with it and your old phone wouldn't work with your carrier anymore. So that's basically what a SIM card is. So now getting back to the point, what is SIM jacking? All right, so we have this phone here and we're gonna say this is my phone, so it's Levi's phone. Um, and then we're gonna have an attacker here called like button. Oh dang it, that's not what I meant to put, but while I'm changing this, go ahead and smash that like button. So we're gonna have an attacker here called A-hole, and this is gonna be his phone. Um, why not call it A-hole? Because this guy obviously is an A-hole, right? <laughs> so A-hole here, he calls the carrier from my phone, and he's going to impersonate me. So, rang rang, hello, this is Levi. Hi, welcome to AT&T, how can I help you? Uh, I got a new phone here and I have a new SIM card and I'd like to get it activated under my account. Okay, sure. Um, what's your PIN number? Uh, 2019. Duh. <laughs> okay, perfect. That's your PIN number. We'll go ahead and get that, get your phone activated. You just have to make sure to go ahead and turn it off and turn it back on. Your phone will be good to go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so you see how easy that was. All right, so what, what just happened here? Um, a hole, a hole just called my cell phone carrier and he had a new phone and he just told them, Hey, I have a new SIM card. I need to get it activated. He gave them the password and boom, all of a sudden, instead of my carrier talking to my phone here back and forth, this is wiped out. My carrier doesn't see this phone. My carrier doesn't see my phone anymore. It's thinking that this attacker 
is my phone now because the guy switched the SIM card. Uh, he was able to get them to activate the SIM card on this phone here and so now the carrier thinks his this phone is hit is my phone uh, leaving me out in the dark here and that's the definition of sim jacking because it's taking my sim on my phone and he's jacking it and using the sim on his phone to pretend like it's me and as you can see in this situation it's super it's unfortunately super easy for the a-hole to be able to get in and switch the sim cards that and swap the SIM cards like that um, because all he has to know is a, a basic PIN number. Um, sometimes it's not even a PIN number, sometimes it's just a birth date or an address or something like that for verification. And unfortunately, it's super easy for attackers to be able to use this to get into your account or to be able to steal your phone, uh, be able to steal your phone number, be able to steal your text messages, um, and steal your data plan and things like that. Um, so that brings us on to our next point, which is the bad about SIM jacking. So what can happen to you once you get SIM jacked? And the biggest thing here is 2FA, two-factor authentication. So nowadays, um, it, there's a big push out there, and I highly recommend a push from me and all the other security experts that you set up two-factor authentication on all of your accounts. Well, unfortunately, there's a lot of providers that offer two-factor authentication to where you use your phone, um, where it'll send you a text, it'll give you a phone call uh, to be able to, as your second factor, to authenticate. So you type in a password, and then you get that text or that phone call that you have to submit um, in order to be able to get into your account. Um, and then also, um, the phone number or the text can be used to reset your password for your account so that can allow the a-hole back here once he does the sim jacking and his phone actually is now your phone because of this um, he's able to be able to break into your accounts by um, doing a password reset sending text messages from your number that's going to his phone and then he can reset your accounts and get into your accounts and do bad things um, and then you got certain applications like tinder where all you need to be able to log in is the text message and then boom you're in and then there's certain applications like twitter where you can actually send out a tweet via a text so um, an attacker can send out malicious tweets you can send out things that you don't want out on your twitter account and i'm sure there's other social media accounts you used to be able to do it with facebook i'm not sure if you can do it anymore uh, but yeah it really opens up the risk of compromise for your accounts when they could swap your SIM card like that. So that's the biggest issue. And then the number two issue is social engineering. So once an attacker has access to your number, guess what they can do? They can send out text messages to friends and family, um, requesting money, coming up with some elaborate story that you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any cash on you. And if, and if you can wire them some money or something like that, um, they could get do a phone call to do a similar type of thing. Um, just tons of limitless, limitless, limitless bad things. Um, they can reset your email password, get in your email account, send out a phishing email to somebody, and get them to fall for it and do and get money. They could um, f put malware on their computer and set up a ransomware type situation. Um, just bad things. So these are the two reasons why SIM jacking is so bad. Um, you don't want people to be able to get into your accounts and do whatever the F they want, do you? All right, so what are some real world cases from this situation? I have two examples. The first example was actually last month. It was the CEO of Twitter um, had his phone SIM jacked according to cybersecurity experts. One of the Twitter accounts that he manages was blowing up with just tons of garbage and gum, guggly goop. You know, I like that word, guggly goop. And totally a made up word. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, it was just filling up that Twitter account with a bunch of spam and terrible things. And it, cybersecurity experts point it back to SIM swapping. And basically, he had his phone set up so that he was able to tweet out. Um, via texting and so when the 
a-hole or the attacker um, did the sim jacking to his phone um, they didn't even have to break into his Twitter account all they had to do is send out texts uh, via his phone number and they were able to tweet that way so that that's a pretty high profile case a CEO of Twitter um, and then I have a personal example myself um, and one of the organizations that I was working for somebody in the organization was out on vacation out to Colorado um, we get a phone call and they're saying that their phone is not working so they're not able to receive phone calls they can't get texts they can't send out texts they can't call anybody they were using somebody else's phone their data didn't work and they're wondering what the heck is going on so we call our cell phone carrier and the cell phone carrier is like well somebody set up a new phone under that and we're like well we didn't authorize that <laughs> <laughs> and the, the funny thing about the story is because the person from the organization that was out on vacation, he was out in the mountains. And so he just thought his phone wasn't working because he was out in the mountains. But then he got back to um, an area where his phone should have been working. And that's when he started to get suspicious. And it was a bad situation because he was out in the mountains for three days and he didn't know this and that person had access to his phone number and his t and text messages um, for three days. So who knows what that person was able to do. Um, but, but that just shows that... Um, how bad these situations can be. But this is a perfect real world example that I myself has run into and it's proof that this does happen in the real world and not to just CEO type of people and big wigs like Warren Buffett or the CEO of Twitter. All right, so we're not, now we're on the most beneficial part to you guys. But how can you guys protect yourself from this terrible thing. The number one thing that you guys can do is contact your carrier and set a pin or a password on your account. And preferably make that pin as long as possible. Don't do four characters. Do something six characters or longer. If, if possible, I would get it up to the 15 mark. Throw that pin in a password manager um, because you probably won't remember it if, that's long, if it's that long. Um, and then make sure when you're setting that pin that you're not using something super relatable to you. Don't use your birth date or, or like the current year or something super simple. Make sure it's hard. Um, and then uh, obviously if you can use a passphrase, that's even better. So that's one of the biggest things that you can do to help protect yourself. It doesn't mean that somebody's not going to try to figure out what your pin is or social engineer um, your carrier rep and to be able to bypass that pen, but it makes it much harder to be able to do the SIM swap. All right, so the number two thing that you can help to do to protect yourself is avoid using your phone number for two-factor authentication. Um, I know that two fact that there's a lot of websites out there that still two fact your phone number is the only way that you can use two factor authentication and for those you're just kind of stuck there but if it has another option um, such as uh, being able to use like a, a number generator um, such as Google Authenticator where you can install an app on your phone and then um, you basically take a picture of a QR code in that app. And then from there on, your phone will generate random numbers that you can type into the website when you log in. Um, you wanna go a route like that. Um, also, you can use a hardware security key um, where you tie that security key to that website. And then when that security key is plugged into your computer, that website knows that you're good to go after you sign in. Um, so those are some suggestions. Try to avoid um, using your phone number as a second factor if possible. But if you have to have your phone as a second factor, that's better than not having a second factor. The number three thing that you can do to help protect yourself in this situation is to use a separate phone number for all of your accounts. So basically you would you, you would get another phone number that you don't use publicly that you only use to sign up for two-factor authentication on accounts. And then that makes it much harder for people to find your phone number to be able to um, try to rec try to do the SIM swapping. Um, one suggestion that I can give to you guys is using Google Voice to hand out free phone numbers and then you can just use the Google Voice phone number um, on all of your accounts. 
Um, just do a Google search on it and you can find more information about that. Obviously, this is kind of an extreme method, but it does help reduce your risk of being involved in a SIM swapping attack. And then the number four thing that you guys could do to help protect yourself is look for signs of SIM swapping and act as soon as possible if you think that you have been involved in SIM swapping. And what I mean by this is um, if you see signs such as your phone just stops working, you're not able to send text messages, you're not able to make phone calls, your data is not working, and especially if you're in an area uh, where you should have good cell phone reception or you see that you're having good cell phone reception, that should be a big red flag that there's something wrong and you need to contact your cell phone carrier immediately because time is a huge factor in this. The more time that you give Mr. A-hole back here to be able to try to break into your accounts and contact friends and family members, um, <laughs> the more damage they're going to be able to do. So the faster that you can get the case resolved, um, the better. So that's what I have to, um, for you guys about SIM jacking today. I hope you guys learned a lot of information. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for the YouTube algorithm so that this video can get promoted and help more people like you to help protect yourselves from these terrible situations. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching guys and have a great day.